if we were truly hungry. Yeah. Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're doing something different. We're gonna walk the trap line with Dave Canterbury. So stick around. Like I mentioned before, today we're doing something different. I'm out here on site at the Pathfinder School. I'm gonna give you, the people, some one-on-one -on -one time with Dave Canterbury. We're gonna go out and set some traps, and then later on we'll walk that trap line and see how we did. So enjoy. Got a ring down inside there, and as that animal down there digging for the food, he yanks up on that ring and it releases this trap on his hand. So all you do is you squeeze this down and pull the lever over, just like that. Get the trigger up underneath it. You just gotcha. kind of got to snug it up with your hand a little bit, just like that. All right. Daddy, I'll have at it. Yeah, let's go once. Really good. Don't worry about it. If you get some on the ground, you don't eat it all anyway. Sprinkle just a little bit outside of the outside. There you go. That's good. Now, get your bottle of syrup. It doesn't hurt anything. Look here. It doesn't hurt anything with that. You even take a little bit of this. Throw it out. Yeah, and just kind of spread it out a little bit. It'll get, you know, they'll, they'll follow the trail. Now take your take your uh, sweet stuff and syrup there. Don't squirt any of it into the trap because you've got the trap up. But just start and you'll run a line right onto the trail with it. That's like a scent stop, man. There you go, that's good. They come walking in, they're going to be like, ah! park. Look at that. There'll be a coon on that motherfucker, possibly, guaranteed. You don't want nothing around that trap. You want him to be able to work that entire set. He'll put his foot in your trap. Don't worry about that. He's only going to dig it up if your trap is loose. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to decide the orientation of your trap. We got three ways right here you can come in. So, we're going to put that trap here. And our backer is going to go this direction. So, we're going to dig it from this direction so we're pulling everything away from our trap bed. We don't have to make this trap bed huge. It just has to be deep enough for the trap to get buried. That's a plenty big set for that trap. So now what we're going to do is we're going to decide where we're going to anchor this thing. We're going to drive this earth anchor in the ground. So if our trap's going to sit in the middle of this thing someplace, we can earth anchor it any place. It's not a big deal. So we just take a tool that drives this thing into the ground and it goes in straight down. When you pull it, it turns sideways. So the coyote can't yank it out of the ground. And I usually shove that thing in, get a hammer after it. And I drive it in up to the chain usually. Give it a little yank to make sure it turns sideways. Now, setting these traps. See, this has got an offset jaw in it, so 
it only closes down so far. So it's not like it's gonna snap the bone on that animal. But these traps take a little tail end to set. So you gotta squeeze them down and open that strong jaw. And the strong jaw is considered the side that the dog for the trap's gonna go on. Lift the pan over the dog and let it go. This is your weak jaw here. There's no tension on that jaw right now. The tension is on the strong This jaw. trap's got a night latch on it. And you can hear it pop into. That's so you can set your traps in the dark and you know that your pan is level across the thing and any movement past that just set the trap off. Okay. So now, get the trap set again. And I usually just leave it all the way up on the pan like that while I'm working around the set. You put your hand in that thing, you're not going to forget it. I can promise you that. like this the deeper you get that hole the better off you are because he's gonna try to dig out dig into that anyway and dig that thing in there good okay so that gives him a sniffing hole to go to now what we're gonna do with that is I like to use sheep's wool in that hole. Number one, it already smells like an animal. It's already a little furry looking. And we're gonna take some good stuff. Not here. really worry about that. Spotted fury, bobcat hellaciousness. We're just going to take and we're going to saturate this sheep's wool with it, just like that. About the side of a double M&M there. Just like that. Take our earth anchor setter. Pack that dude down in the hole. Just like that. A little run down, good. Gives him a little stank trail to mess with there. Okay? Now... We're gonna get a pan cover and this is just gonna allow us to pack dirt around the trap without getting dirt underneath the pan so it doesn't keep it from going off when it gets dirt underneath it. Talk about that here in a minute. The next thing we're gonna do we're gonna find a stick above this trap which you just happen to have this one right here and we're gonna put a little skunk scent on there for long distance call lower. Get them coming in from a long ways away to investigate this thing. Now, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna bed this trap. I like to use a little bit of this loose dirt to get this trap in good and solid. And I offset it from the thing a little bit, like that. Get our night latch popped. There you go. Now you gotta keep your hands out of it. Now, what you don't want this trap to do is, you don't want this trap to move or rock around it all in here because if he steps on it and it moves he's going to dig it up you always know when you didn't have a good solid trap bed because it'll be dug up every time if he steps on one of them jaws and it moves he's going to dig it up because he thinks something's under the ground that he can get out a mouse or something moved underneath his foot yeah. now we're going to come in here Start to sift dirt over that bad boy, just like that. And we're just trying to bring the set up to about where the original ground level was for the most part. Like I said, he's not gonna jump down into a hole to get your stuff. Now, you can, if you're gonna fence him at all, I would take like a couple dirt claws maybe and put them over here where you don't want his feet to go because he's not going to put his foot on other things that are uncomfortable either. So if I want his foot right here, I want to make that the most comfortable place for him to stand. And that's all the fencing I would need. You don't ever want stuff poking him in the face around this whole stick, thing sticking out. You don't want that because you don't want something poking him in the nose. Now, last things last, 
we're going to do here is we're going to take some coyote urine and hose down the set. Just like that. That's all there is to it. Usually you can always tell what happens to your traps. You come back here and your trap's set off and there's not an animal in it. You can always tell what happened. If the trap is out of the bed completely and sprung, a deer stepped in it. If it's just dug up and flipped over, it moved when the animal stepped on it. They dug it up. A lot of times it won't be set off when that happens. They'll just dig it up and flop it over. The whole ass. Talking about that video footage that yeah. left? That was pretty cool. Yeah, I actually didn't like that. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Can you send it to me? Or did you get yeah, it? Yeah, I can search it. Right on your back one? Like you stood there and squirted that freaking tree in the back of that thing? Yep, and then the back one too. The back over here. And then maybe take some out here. There you go. That's it. Very cool. Nice, dude. The coyote pests on the ray. There's the lid. There you go. What are we missing here? Just push it down into the water line. That's good, yeah. That's fine. Get our trap safety device here and set that dude right there just to make sure we don't snap our own fingers off. Give ourselves just a little bit of spread on them whiskers.
Fuck y'all are full of shit. <laughs> like, I was just laying down taking a nap. <laughs> I you was ain't. just trying to get comfortable here. You, you ain't bastards. Even, you ain't even talking. Doesn't like you either. Is that man? I thought I had this thing licked. Two. <laughs> if we were truly hungry? Yeah. Two. <laughs> it matches the beard. <laughs> He's carrying his beard away. Great beard is awesome. There you go. <laughs> Welcome back. That education was priceless. Just my humble opinion. Let's talk about the reality. Four dudes over three days and a combination of 27 traps and snares and we got two possums. That's it. And that's the reality. Trapping truly is a numbers game. That's why it's called trapping and not catching. The more you put out, that increases your chances of actually getting something. Now do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.